So now I'm going to add the vanity to the bathroom here. And you can see that I've already popped in the floor. And I've got the bathroom, it's a 3D component. And I've got the toilet, it's a 3D component. If you're wondering the position of where the door should be, I've placed the bath first. Then I will add 900 again as a distance between the bath and the door. And note the position or the swing of the door as well for that ensuite. So with this one, I've got a couple of basins that need to go in. And until I actually position those basins, I'm not quite sure what size and shape this is going to be. So I'm going to start with something and then I'm going to place the basins and then I'm going to manipulate my in-place family quite easily. I'm coming to architecture, component drop down, model in place. I'm choosing casework again and OK. I'm going to sweep vanity. I'm creating a simple extrusion. And again, I'm just going to use the rectangle tool. I noticed it went from one side to the other. And it looks roughly 450 wide. Sorry, one too many zeros. 455. Starts at eight, a zero, finishes at 850. Actually, with this one, I want it to be one of those suspended vanities. So I'm going to start it at 550 and take it up to 850. I'm going to hit apply, big green tick to finish the extrusion, big green tick to finish the family. There's that section box I created earlier and you can see there's my vanity unit. But if I want to position these basins accurately, what I really need to do is to have a proper front on elevation of that vanity unit so that I can move things in my ground floor plan, I'm coming up to view, I'm coming up to elevation, and can you see that as I move around the drawing, that that little nose of this view is actually going to appear pointing at whatever wall I'm closest to. So I'm going to click here. This is something I may or may not delete later. If it was something I was doing for a project, a set of documents, then I would actually create just a call out, a detail of just this room, and this room would be drawn at 1 to 50 or 1 to 20, and I would place this detail, this little elevation symbol, in that view, not in the 1 to 100 floor plan. As you can see, it will automatically resize. So if I was to go to 1 to 20, that's a much better size for what we're doing. But considering what I'm doing today is just setting it up and then I'm going to delete, that's fine. So if I click on the nose, can you see that what I get is a blue line with some dots? And we all know that when you see those blue lines with dots, that's the line that can be edited. In this situation, it's saying I'm taking an elevation. I start at this exact point. I finish at that exact point, And this is as far as I see. Anything beyond that line, I can't see. However, I want to pull this line back because I want to be able to see the basins if they protrude forward, which they do according to this drawing. Okay, so that's clicking on the black nose. Before I go to that elevation, I've already loaded in my two basins. So I'm coming up to architecture and component. I'm going to pop down through here and find my basin. Vanity basin square. If I hit the space bar, that will allow me to rotate as I go. And again, I'm going to position these two at the moment, and then the rest of the positioning is going to happen in elevation. I'll work out. Might as well do that now. I'll put some permanent dimensions in, and then again delete them. And I want both of these to sit roughly 300 for the moment, unless I decide that that isn't working for me. So 300 away from the edge, giving a little bit of room in between. Maybe I could go a little bit further that way, but that's fine for the moment. So if I pop into this view, okay, I'm going to set this to 1 to 20. You can see that it took in 
the information from my levels, which is terrific. It hasn't taken in the thickness of the walls, and that's the way a room elevation should be, not a sectional elevation, just a room elevation. All you want is the information within the room, not the structural information. And you can see that there are my basins. These are fairly simplistic basins. Let's have a look at them from this view. And they actually don't give us a whole lot of information. So we can make a presumption that these basins actually need to sit on top of the vanity. If I was doing this for a client, I would have gone and found a basin from the manufacturer that I would like to use. Maybe it's Corona. And I would download the exact Revit model and then use those. I might swap these over in just a minute. So back to my elevation. Here it is here. East, north, south and west. So I know this is the one I want. And I would probably rename that at this point. I'm going to put in some vertical dimensions, which is what a room elevation is about. It's only about putting in vertical. So I'm going to pop those in. Okay, so if I want my hips to kind of rest on the basin, if I want that the top to be 850, I actually need to move these down. I'm going to use my move tool. So I've selected both by holding down the control key and then I'm popping onto the snap points of endpoint and then I'm bringing it down vertically till it hits the top of this. Now, can you see if I click on my in-place family that I get these little controls again? So if I click and drag, I can actually start to manipulate the way that this sits. And sometimes when I drag, it will do what Revit refers to as magnetise. Can you see if I come down to the floor? Can you see it kind of jumping and then that blue line appearing? However, it's not wanting to magnetise to these components. However, if I use the Align tool, so Modify, Align or AL, and click on the bit where I want it to go and the bit that's going, you can see that that will sit perfectly. And now, now if I adjust that by eye, that will work but it's annoying, so I'm probably just going to edit in place, click on my extrusion. If that's 720, this should be 420 if I want that to be 300 overall. So a couple of different ways of get, achieving the same result, whether I'm manipulating the model without having to edit or using the properties within the extrusion. Finish model. We go and have a look at that now. You can see that there's our two vanity basins sitting on top of the vanity.